Hello, I'm Lauren Malhoyt, and I'm here with another ACI 101 video. In this video, we're going to concentrate on VMM integration, or Virtual Machine Manager integration. Now, we're going to go through this from a VMware perspective, but it applies to all hypervisors. We already have an ACI fabric and a vSphere environment set up, let's say, including the vCenter server. We configure a VMM domain within the APIC, specifying things like hostname or IP of the vCenter server, the name of the data center, and of course, credential information. When the VMM domain gets created, it actually creates a new distributed virtual switch in vCenter. Now, if you've ever worked with VMware, you know that you actually have to manually add the host then to this DVS, or vSphere distributed switch. Once hosts, or really vNix, are added to the DVS, you can then start creating endpoint groups in the APIC and specify that they're attached to the VMM domain. Now, this will automatically create corresponding port groups in vCenter. Remember that ACI has nothing to do with vMotion or provisioning VMs. So at this point, you need to use vCenter or some cloud management tool like Clicker to provision VMs and place them in the correct port groups. And finally, we can apply policy between these port groups, which gets applied to the VMs. Now, again, I'm using VMware as an example here, but we can do the same thing with KVM and Hyper-V. Imagine instead of vCenter, you have an SCVMM server. And instead of creating port groups, we're creating networks. With Hyper-V integration, we can even use the Azure Pack or Azure Stack to automate a lot of this, much like we would with Cloud Center or vRealize automation. Now, let's talk a little bit about the micro-segmented EPG. This is a newer concept. And what this basically does is allow us to specify attributes which will pull in VMs automatically. So for instance, if I specify VM name as an attribute for my new micro-segmented EPG and specify the keyword as web, I will automatically have a VM by the name of HQWeb get pulled into that micro-segmented EPG. And then the policy applied to that EPG will be applied automatically to that VM now. Now we can use any of the attributes listed to the right on this slide. We also have intra-EPG isolation. It's achieved by using a config flag in the EPG, which can be set on the APIC. It's called preferred policy control. If it is set, intra-EPG packets will be dropped. Now this setting is pushed to the AVS or the DVS as part of the EPG download, and the DVS stores within the EPG. During packet path, the EPG setting is checked to decide whether to allow intra-EPG traffic or not. This would have taken several ACLs or firewall rules to set up in traditional networking. Now it's a flip of the switch and providing one contract, which may have even already been created for consumption. So now Web1 can talk to App1, Web1 can talk to App2, no problem, but Web2 can't talk to Web1 anymore. Not only are we securing our VM traffic, we're also able to secure anything within the other VM kernel port groups, like management, fault tolerance, vMotion, et cetera. And of course, we're able to secure bare metal workloads, including the server where the hypervisor resides. Remember, it's not all software. And if we think that we need to secure our virtual workloads, well, then we probably need to have the same types of security in our physical workloads as well. We also have what's called the vCenter plugin. Now this will actually install an ACI plugin on your vCenter web UI. From here, VMware admins and ACI admins alike can go into the vCenter web UI and create tenants, create application profiles, actually consume layer two and layer three external routes, consume service graphs, and create all of this, which will automatically then be created on the APIC. So this gives VMware admins a lot of control as well, or at least visibility into what's going on. There's also some minor troubleshooting that can be done from the vCenter plugin. For more information, please check out these websites. And thank you for watching.